Good morning guys, good morning everybody, I hope you guys are all doing great. Uh, hi, hello, my name is CJ, and I am here again with another art artwork for us to take a look at. And of course dissect and inspect and, you know, look at it retrospectively, because yeah, that's what I do. Uh, I record my art process and kind of talk about it in my youtube channel <laughs> fun times as usual um so yeah today i'm doing a uh photo study of an image that i got from google maps and uh, this is actually pretty popular with a lot of people uh online uh virtual plane air um if no one is familiar if if you're new to art or um, you know, a young and just practicing uh the craft. Uh you might not have come across the term plain air yet, or if you have, then that's great. But plain air, um to simply explain it, it's basically um painting outdoors <laughs> and painting in location. It started in the eighteen hundreds, uh right around the time of impressionism. Um it basically uh back in the day it was like really difficult to paint in location because of all the stuff that you need to be carrying your canvas and you know all your paints and whatnot um but a portable easel was finally invented it, like it really surprised me it took that long to be invented um but yeah since the renaissance it took about 300 years for someone to come up with the idea of a portable easel <laughs> to carry around with you but anyway so yeah somebody invented it or it got created sometime around the 1800s and plain air painting like exploded um, and it's what helped impressionism um get a good grip on on uh, everyone's imagination or that's how impressionism exploded basically because um, impressionism relied a lot on plain air paintings but anyways plain air is basically a French word for I think it's a French word I'm not sure it's basically a word uh, to describe painting on location and so anyways um, ever since Google Maps uh, came into existence uh, people started doing this practice of virtual plain air you know, if you can't go to a certain location because of um, geographic limitations, such as it's too far, <laughs> then the next best thing to do is to jump on MapCrunch. Well, I use MapCrunch um, to get this image, but um, most people would just go to Google Maps and just randomly look at locations from Google Maps and then use that as their um, plain air study. Um, I like map crunch. If you're not, if you guys are not familiar with map crunch, um, I've talked about map crunch in an earlier video, uh, Slenderman in Italy. Uh, I talked about map crunch, and map crunch is great because it just randomly puts you into a random place somewhere, um, in the world. Uh, basically, it just pulls the information from Google Maps and puts you somewhere really cool so yeah if you're you know kind of having a creative block artistic wise and you wanted to warm up for the day which is why i do warm-ups because you know it's it's a great way to just really flex my artistic muscles and get into the groove of drawing for the day but anyways um oh map crunch <laughs> yeah so map crunch is typically what i use to get me to specific locations um this one is kind of different though. I'm not sure if I got this from MapCrunch or from Google Maps because this is actually a very specific location that I hunted down for. This is, um, or I think I did use MapCrunch. I think I typed in the location of of this particular place um, and then it pulled up this image, which is really cool because um, after double checking in Google Maps, like a year later, like maybe like two months ago, I decided to double check if this is the place that that I remember it to be. And lo and behold, it was the right place when I double checked in on Google Maps. So yeah, I, I think I did 
um, pull up this image from map crunch but anyways when i was in map crunch i typed the location in this place which is this place is basically uh san Pablo lake in san pablo city uh from philippines like in the philippines uh from where i was and i had uh, wonderful memories of this place um the city that I lived in is called the city of seven lakes because we have uh, seven lakes. <laughs> so yeah, the city have seven lakes. So it's called the city of seven lakes. Anyways, my point was that um, St. Pilot Lake is a widely known lake in in the city and it's probably the most developed because it is pretty much close to the center of the city all the other lakes are like pretty much uh farther away from the town center um well this one was very close to the town center so obviously it's like the place to go to you know uh so yeah i have very vivid memories of this place and um I don't know why I just randomly thought of looking it up, but when I was in Map Crunch uh, during this particular time, um, which was June 19 of 2019, you know, I just kind of just thought about it and just randomly typed in, you know, some pilot Lake and I came up with this image. So I was like, yay, cool, you know, and so I decided to do a plain air virtual study of it. And, um, so yeah that's basically what this is all about you know me reminiscing about a location that i used to frequent when i was young and i wanted to draw it and so yeah um and of course you know with me i just don't do just regular plein air studies i typically you know mix it up and change things a little bit and in this case you know I didn't exactly go along with what's on the photo. Um, like, okay, well, I guess let me, let me uh, explain a little bit. <laughs> Sorry, I got distracted with <laughs> what's going on. And, and create a, I realized process wise that it's progress so far already um because i'm already in my coloring phase as i was still in my sketching phase but anyways uh, what i was going to try and say was that this photo um is so much more different than than what i looked up in google maps uh, so i don't know if this was like taken at a different point in time versus the one that was on google map I don't know which one was more recent and so i don't know exactly the state of the development of some pilot like if it's a lot more developed um and so uh i i don't really know like if if some pilot like looks like this basically you know the thing was that the photo that i pulled up from map crunch was kind of fuzzy and so when i did my line sketch i had to basically invent like a lot of details like the areas where it's all in shadow like i couldn't really tell what's going on so all of these buildings that i created i can pretty much guarantee you're not gonna find it in the actual some pilot lake city because a lot of this was just invented pretty much like the only thing that i remember is is the foreground like i remember that foreground um that sidewalk the one that i'm working on right now where i'm uh smudging things around uh, like that is pretty much prominent in that in the area where the robot is i had to draw a robot and i'll explain that in a second um like that was very similar to what was what i remember from where from when i was young um but everything else like the buildings in the background like i couldn't really tell what was going on in the photo so when i was like tracing it i pretty much just invented the details you know uh and kind of came up with just like my own details you know because i wasn't really doing a straight up planar study um i was kind of just coming up with my own image in a way but um 
Anyway, so yeah, when I was doing my line sketch, you know, I, I knew that everything was fuzzy and I couldn't really figure out like what was going on. So what I wanted to do was just kind of just come up with my own background. And of course, like as usual, when, when I do my studies, I typically kind of mix things up. And in this case, I added a robot. Now, the thing with the robot is that obviously I love robots <laughs> first thing of all. And um, my my fascination with robots really kind of started with the cartoon fully coolly uh it's an adult cartoon so hey if you're a youngin <laughs> be forewarned i don't want you to get in trouble looking at that cartoon when it's <laughs> for adults but in that adult cartoon there's a robot that pretty much acts like a human like dresses in human clothes walks around in human clothes and i thought that was fascinating eventually like that trope or that that idea of that robot eventually evolved into a movie Chappie which came out like I don't know maybe two or three years ago maybe even five years ago I, I don't even remember how long Chappie came out um I, I think that movie is called Chappie now I'm like <laughs> needing to look this up because I don't remember uh Chappie is a movie the movie that I was thinking of and it came out in 2015 anyway so in in 2015 I, I think Chappie had uh, at one point in time was wearing some form of jacket or something uh, I'm not really sure but anyways in the cartoon Fully Cooly there was a character named Conti and he was a robot and that was his thing that he does was he wear a human jacket and so basically <laughs> i've been inspired by that robot ever since college like i remember in college like painting that robot or like a similar theme robot and ever since then it just kind of stuck with me and so basically that's what that robot is i thought it'd be cool because it'd be out of place so of course the um title of the piece is lost robot waiting on lord conti because lord conti was the character's name so <laughs> anyways lengthy explanation as to what this photo is all about and why there's a robot there yay <laughs> but anyways um I, I figured it's it's always a good thing to talk about like you know how ideas evolve and whatnot so yeah that's how i came up with this image um and I guess now it's a good thing for me to start talking about the art process because it's been going on for quite some time and they've progressed so far in the video already. Um, so obviously how it started things out or how things started out was with a line sketch. Um, it was a quick line sketch. It wasn't a nice clean line sketch. I just wanted to kind of just rough you know roughly figure out where the shapes of things are where i wanted it to be and um and again like i said i, I everything in the background was kind of so fuzzy it was kind of fuzzy that i couldn't really tell what was going on that i kind of just have to invent some of the details um so that's what i did and then of course you know i wanted to put conti on there and well not conti this robot character and um originally i wanted him back there right uh, i didn't think about putting him forward you know but i knew that i wanted to isolate him a little bit or to at least kind of denote that he's there you know kind of draw the viewer's eyes into that robot and so that's the reason why i put him in like a really bright orange uh sweater so that he would kind of stand out and the way the light shaft is kind of moving and not so much as the light shaft but like the shadows and the light you know the shadows that are being cast by the trees it all kind of you know forms a triangle that kind of leads towards the robot so initially when i placed him there i thought that you know visually like he would pop out but eventually i changed my the robot's position because it was it was too small and he was too far back that i decided to move him forward eventually but anyways yeah so i started with his line sketch and that's how i start out and then as soon as I'm done with the light sketch, I obviously grab my random Mac brush and just throw in some colors. Uh, and it kind of goes along with the general scene. So, you know, I, I put in uh, a lot of greens on top for the trees and then 
a few yellows where that yellow building is and of course some oranges where Conti is and then pretty much for everything else it's just muted browns and a lot of pink which again like I said I've been using a lot I don't know where pink comes from it's not really typically my favorite color but yeah it's been showing up in a lot of my artwork so we'll just run with that right <laughs> but anyway so after I threw in my um random colors and uh, seriously I have like one of the weirdest coloring phase ever in artwork because <laughs> I don't pay so much attention to it and there's a reason for it like I like the noise that that my coloring process makes because it it gives me you know kind of weird color combinations that sometimes work really really amazing um, like a good example of it would be oranges and purples that I've never thought about combining before but there's this one illustration I did where I, you know, did the random mech brush and just kind of just threw in some colors and I ended up with the color scheme of oranges and purples. And I was like, wow, that's actually a very good combination. <laughs> so, um, case in point, you know, so ever since then, like I've started using the random mech brush, but the thing with, or the random hue variation in my random mech brush, that's how I come up with like all this crazy colors but the thing again with my colors which i've explained this in numerous occasions is that sometimes it comes out with color schemes that are just plain confusingly ugly so yeah it's those are those situations are always tough to work to work with you know because then i have to try and harmonize everything and for the most part, I think I've harmonized everything, but I still get criticism about it where people are like, yeah, yeah, no, it's still too crazy looking. So, yeah, maybe it's something I need to still work on, which is actually still being worked on. It's still actively in my mind now when I do my speed paints. But anyway, so after my coloring phase, of course, I smudge, uh, which basically kind of blends all of these colors together. And as soon as I do my smudging thing, I end up with this base paint, which I start my detailing process on. And basically, that's what you see me do right now. I'm doing my detailing phase. And my detailing phase is pretty much the same steps over and over again. It's basically delineating my edges, making my edges sharper so that my shapes read clearer, accentuating the shadows if the shadows needed a little bit darkening, and then adding highlights. And I do this... Uh, section by section all throughout my painting which is what i'm doing right now i've obviously started in the foreground and then i'm slowly going to start in the background and then i'm going to work some more on the character which you will see me do in the next few minutes so um let's just hang tight listen to some great music and watch as i detail this and i'll talk some more about this piece in a few minutes
Okay, so at this point, um, the background is getting to a really nice uh, point of looking really good. Um, so I guess it's a great time for me to talk about uh, how I detail the background and some of the more bigger challenges I had with this particular illustration. So one of the things that I, I had a challenge with, which I've already mentioned and explained, which was the uh, what was going on in the back, you know. Um, so the way the scene is set up, basically, is this street that the robot is facing is a street that circles around the lake, right? Um, and that little entrance so in my illustration it looks like there's an entrance to a parking lot with a bunch of shopping area that entrance is actually a road that leads to this to this street that circles the lake so it's actually a road it's not even like a, it's not even like a, a shopping center or a shopping area now in in St. Pilot Lake, there are some shops there, but I think there's also some residences uh, in that entrance. I, I'm not sure. I, I don't remember. It's it's been so long since I've been in that area that I don't even know, um, or I don't even remember. But again, like I said, you know, when when I took this photo, I basically just wanted to get the general idea of the photo. Um, in mesh in my illustration which the general idea that i was really just trying to capture are the trees how how that foliage is casting all that shadow onto that street i thought that was like interesting very visual very interesting visually um and so the background buildings just kind of became like secondary uh for me you know it wasn't like very important for me to you know be as truthful to the original photo and that's the reason why i invented like a lot of the details basically because I, I knew that what i really was going for was like the foreground area because i really like the look of shadows and how it was all casted on the street and whatnot um so yeah part of the reason why i did the study in the first place so yeah so the background was a challenge coming up with all this crazy uh details which is fun though because i ended up coming up with this far more developed area than what was in my country so it looks really cool to look at visually you know uh the plants was hard to detail uh trying to figure out like how to detail that was immensely difficult too because uh the original source was you know also different um so that was difficult uh but everything else was was great the trees was easily done i mean like i barely touched it um i spent a long time on the foreground with the sidewalk um but for the most part like yeah, I remember thinking spending I spent a lot of time on it and it looks good. Um, but it makes sense too though, because that, that area really takes up a lot of the space in a in a painting. So for me to have spent that much amount of time on it, it, it just kind of just makes sense. Um so yeah, and then here I am working the robot uh, for the most part, and then eventually after I detail him and decide, you know what, I'm gonna move him forward and put him in the 
in a closer sidewall, closer to the viewer, just so that he's a little bit more evident. So yeah, he kind of pops out. Anyways, really interesting thing about this photo before this video ends is that I ended up using this photo as my background for Tricycle Reader. Um, this uh, illustration that I did, and I mentioned it in that in that video that I have. Um, uh, I mentioned that you know the background I grabbed from from a speed paint, which at this point in time, like this thing took me about seven hours, and I really don't qualify anything above five hours as a speed paint. Um, I only qualify anything under five hours of speed paint. So yeah, I, I thought that this was too long. To consider as one but anyways yeah i ended up using this painting as a background for another painting which hey if it works it works right so yeah but yeah um it was it was a great fun piece to work on and to help me reminisce of an old location that i miss from from my childhood days you know i'd very much like to visit some pollock lake and see how it is like now because i'm pretty sure what i painted is definitely different from what it really is right now <laughs> and i'm probably remembering some pollock lake with rose tinted glasses you know so yeah but anyways yeah it'd be very very nice to see that see that place so and here's my robot moving forward he's closer to the viewer now we could see him clearly now and i'm slowly erasing him so yeah um really really cool painting uh, i i really did have fun uh, even though it's not truthful to the original location and this virtual plane air kind of took a shape of its own and you know became an illustration and an image on its own it's you know it, it's absolutely still fun to work with so yeah and here i am adding my final touches i, I made the robot saturated so he pops out more i don't know i mean it, it did work but <laughs> i don't know if the saturation is too clashy uh some people might think it is but hey it did help the robot pop out some more so you know it's a little bit more obvious but yeah but yep there's my lost robot waiting for his friend conti he's like yo where you at bro i'm waiting on you some pollock lake that's where you said we'll meet <laughs> so yeah but yeah this illustration is pretty much close to being done so yep thank you guys for watching it with me uh i will see you guys in the next video like and subscribe good night